Good morning to you all and welcome to this morning's virtual worship service. Let us look to God in prayer as we prepare ourselves to worship God. Our gracious and loving God, we thank you for giving us yet another day to come before you, to worship you and to adore you and to receive the blessings of your word. And we thank you, Lord, for the faith that you have imbibed in us and as we continue to reflect upon our faith and our witness in the society, we pray, O oh Lord, that our faith would continue to be a witness for you among people of other faiths and that our faith would continue to guide each and every one of our lives as strong witnesses for you. Bless us through this worship service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For the glory of God, let us all join in and sing along in the opening hymn. Walking in sunlight all of my journey over the Jesus has said, I never forsake thee. Promise divine that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Rejoicing, singing His praises, Jesus is mine. Shadows around me, shadows above me, never conceal my Savior and guide. He is the light. Sunlight, ever rejoicing, pressing my way to mansions above, singing His praises, glad we are walking, walking in sunlight, sunlight of love, heaven is The order of service for this morning worship can be downloaded from the church website. Let us follow the order of service. Let us pray. Great and merciful God, your life is the source of all life. Your mercy is our only hope. Your eyes watch over all your creatures. You know the secrets of our hearts. By your life-giving spirit, draw us into your presence that we may worship in the true life of your Spirit, who lives moved by your love, through him who has led us to your heart of love, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now enter into a time of confession. Brothers and sisters, we have come together to hear God's most holy word and to receive the body and blood of the Lord. 
Let us therefore kneel and examine ourselves in silence, seeking God's grace, that we may draw near to him with repentance and faith. Let us now spend some time reflecting upon God's words and in introspection. Let us. You who truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and peace with your neighbor and intend to live a new life following the commandments of God and walking from now on in his holy ways, make your humble confession to the compassionate God that you may be reconciled anew to him through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us all say together the confessional prayer. O God of compassion, we confess that we have sinned against you and our sisters and brothers. We have not been true followers of your new way in Christ. We have not shared in your liberating work in the world. We have fallen short of your glory. In your great compassion, make us clean from our sin and set us free in the joy of your spirit that we may serve you with new lives through Jesus Christ who gave his life that we might live in peace with you and with all creation. Amen. Hear the gracious word of God to all who truly turn to him through Jesus Christ. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The Savior of the world, the refuge of the repentant, forgives and strengthens all who truly seek his grace. He accepts us as his sons and daughters, and sets us free from the bondage of our past. For Christ died and rose to new life, that we might all share his wholeness and abundant life. As God's own people, be merciful in action, kind in heart, humble in mind. Be always ready to forgive as freely as God has forgiven us. And above everything else, be loving and never forget to be thankful for what Christ has done for us. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let us now re receive the peace of God. Having been forgiven and made whole through our peacemaker, let us live together in peace. God's peace challenges us and guides us towards the acts of justice, peace, and integration of the whole creation. Let us share the peace with one another in our homes. The peace of the Lord be with you and also be with you. Make me a channel of your peace Where there's despair in life let me bring hope Where there is darkness only light And where there's sadness Let us now join in by saying the collect for the day together. God, the sower and sustainer, who intended us to be the living on the world, help us to seek your will that does not overlook anyone who seeks you, that helps us to be present with the people of multiple faiths, and that keeps us undefiled as the transforming leaven, so that many may find shelter and solace in your branches and shadows, bringing joys to all nations. 
through jesus christ who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forever amen let us now listen to the scripture readings for the day this old testament bible reading is taken from the book of daniel chapter 1 verses 1 to 21 daniel chapter 1 verses 1 to 21 daniel and his friends obey god in the third year of the reign of jehoiakim king of judah nebuchadnezzar king of babylon came to jerusalem and besieged it and the lord gave jehoiakim king of judah into his hand with some of the articles of the house of god which he carried into the land of shinar to the house of his god and he brought the articles into the treasure house of his god then the king instructed ashpenaz the master of his eunuchs to bring some of the children of israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles young men in whom there was no blemish but good looking gifted in all wisdom possessing knowledge and quick to understand who had ability to serve in the king's palace and whom they might teach the language and literature of the chaldeans and the king appointed for them a daily provision of the king's delicacies and of the wine which he drank and 3 years of training for them so that at the end of that time they might serve before the king now from among those of the sons of judah were daniel hananiah mishael and azaria to them the chief of the eunuchs gave names he gave daniel the name belshazzar to hananiah shadrach and to mishael meshach and to azaria abednego but daniel purposed in his heart that he would not de- defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies not with the wine which he drank therefore he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself now god had brought daniel into the favor of good will of the chief of the eunuchs and the chief of the eunuchs said to daniel i fear my lord the king who has appointed your food and drink for why should he see your faces looking worse than the young men who are of your age then you would endanger my head before the king so daniel said to the steward whom the chief of the eunuchs had set over daniel hananiah mishael and azaria please test your servants for 10 days and let them give veg- let give vegetables to eat and water to drink then let our appearance be examined before you and the appearance of the young men who eat the portion of the king's delicacies and as you see it fit deal with your servants so he consented with them in this matter and tested them 10 days and at the end of 10 days their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies thus the steward took away their portion of delicacies and the wine that they were to drink and gave them vegetables as for these four young men god gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom and daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams now at the end of the days when the king had said that they should be brought in the chief of the eunuchs brought them in before number that nasa then the king interviewed interviewed them and among them all none was found like daniel hananiah mishael and azaria therefore they served before the king and all matters of wisdom understanding about which the king examined them he found them 10 times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his realm thus daniel continued until the first year of the king cyrus thanks be to the o god the epistle reading is taken from the book of acts chapter 10 
verses 9 to 16. Acts chapter 10, beginning to read from verse 9. Peter's vision. The next day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up to the house top about the sixth hour to pray. And he became hungry and wanted something to eat. But while they were preparing it, he fell into a trance and saw the heavens opened and something like a great sheet descending, being led down by its four corners upon the earth. In it were all kinds of animals and reptiles and birds of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, By no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice came to him again a second time, What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times, and the thing was taken up at once to heaven. Here ends the epistle reading. Thanks be to thee, O Lord. The gospel reading is taken from the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 13, verses 31 to 33. He put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is larger than all the garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like living that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour till it was all lived. Here ends the gospel reading. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Alleluia, 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 praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, 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 praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord.
This is my last sermon as the presbyter in charge of St. John Church. My, I began my ministry in 1979 in St. John Church as an exposure candidate and subsequently as presbyter assistant during Reverend Victor Joshua's time. And now as presbyter in charge, I complete my service in this church. It is a fact of the matter that every ministry has its own, you know, challenges. But because of you, the congregation, I was able to take up every challenge with cheerfulness and happiness, trusting that the prayers of the people of God in this church are with me at all times. I have done the best that I could and I sincerely labored in the way that I should and I try to relate to people as best as I could and maintain the cordiality and in fact as you all know every single ministry of the church had been going through very smoothly and in fact, there were a lot of improvement in the ministry of the church. Every wing of the church is a testimony for that. And every convener of the wings, and every secretary or uh, the president or the secretary of the uh, wings would testify to this fact that the ministry of the church had been going on very well without any issues so far. And I want to thank God for each of you. And I really praise God that the blessing of the Lord Almighty would continue to be showered upon you and that you would be a blessing and that you would really harvest the benefit of God's word that was sown among you by preaching, by teaching, and particularly in the neighborhood fellowship. And I would like to thank God that you will have the blessing and you will have the benefit and you will realize what the ministry of the word of God has really meant to you. And may God bless each of you. And this is the final, you know, kind of a word. And I'm not following the lectionary today. And I thought I would leave with you a promise. Promise from God's word. So that you can always come back to it and relate to God and relate to each other. And the promise that I have chosen to share with you is this. Yahweh Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. This is found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 and 5. In fact, when the Israelites were entering into the promised land, there was this, you know, compulsion from the leader, the Moses, and he wanted to admonish the people Israel into realizing what is more important by what is what is more important for the chosen people of God the chosen people of God had to realize who they are 
what they are, what their future will be. So Moses said, the most important thing that you need to hold on to in your life is the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. You shall love this God with, your, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. The one single most important thing in our spiritual life is loyalty to God. There are many areas in our life that demand our loyalty. There are many attractions all around. It is not those attractions that matter, but it is fixing our eyes upon our Creator at all times that matters a lot. Fixing our eyes upon our Creator and the single most loyalty to God is the most important thing that Moses was commanding the Israelite people to hold on to. You know, there is uh, this particular incident that I shared with you in many a times during my sermon. When we look at the sun, sunlight, and face it, the shadow falls backwards. But when we turn our back to the sunlight, the shadow falls to the fringe. And there is a lesson in this. It is a lesson that comes from the natural, you know, uh, creation by God. When we turn and face the sunlight, the shadow falls backwards. It is so in reality in our own life. When we fix our eyes upon Christ our Creator, when we look up to God with all sincerity, when we hold on to Him as our final reference point in everything, then the curse of this world falls backwards. And the curse of this world will not loom large in front of us. It is God who takes care of the curse of this world. We are called to be holy because he is holy. We are called to be kind because he is kind. We are called to be gentle because God is gentle. We are called to be forgiving because God is forgiving. We are called to be understanding because God is understanding. But having said all these things, the word of God says that we have a limitation. We have to be like our God. We are earthly human creatures. We share this earth by our creator. And this does not mean that we are going to be that we are going to be supernatural human beings, but we are striving to be saints in this world. There is one scriptural warning that comes to us all the time. When the God, the Creator, purposed you in this world, He called us to be imitators of this great and wonderful God. And the single most loyalty to our God would make us a true bearer of God's light into this world. Dear brothers and sisters, as I leave, I would like to leave these words with you. We will be meeting. We will meet in some form or, you know, some forum or another. We would meet in, you know, you know any programs. And definitely, we will have an opportunity to interact. And the thing that you will have to keep in your mind is the words that Moses gave to the Israelite people by saying, hold on to God. Let God be the single most point of contact in your life. Let God be the single most loyalty of your life. Let God be everything. You know, there is this beautiful chorus in Sunday school that we sing, trust in the Lord and don't despair. He is a friend so true. No matter what the troubles are, Jesus will see you through. 
You know, that is the truth. There are many times we go through very, very difficult times. Sometimes difficulties thrown on us. Sometimes difficulties created by others. Sometimes difficulties wantonly thrown to disfigure and, uh, you know, disrespect us. But remember one thing. It is the Lord who is the judge. It is the Lord who will bring everything to judgment. So, what do you do? Trust in the Lord. Don't despair. He is a friend so true. No matter what the troubles are, Jesus will see you through. That is our confession. When that becomes our confession, then we are single. We have that single most loyalty towards God. That God is everything. And then very importantly, the scripture says, the Lord, the, our God is the Lord is one. And you shall love your God. That is very, very important. Loving God. Who would say that you do not love the God? Who would turn around and say, I don't love God? Everybody loves God. Even sometimes the atheists say, yes, we love God. People who do not believe uh, in religions, they would turn around and say, agnostics, they would turn around and say, yeah, this all things about God is really good. But here, there is a difference. The Bible says very clearly beforehand, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, a God who is almighty. And this Lord God demands an ultimate love. And our love should be totally on Him. It will be totally committed to, you know, love God. Mother Teresa was once uh, questioned by a group of people, people who were anti-Christian. They went to her and said, uh, why do you do all these things? You are a lady, young lady. At the time she was very young, in the beginning of her years of ministry in Calcutta. And she turned around and said, I love my Jesus. I love my God. So we have given you a lot of trouble. Yes, that's no problem. I love God. My dear brothers and sisters, the acts of kindness that Mother Teresa performed had spoken volumes and that no sermon was needed to talk about it. We always, you know, have to strive to do things that brings in reality that our love for God is shown through our action. We're not just saying, I love God and I love God. How much of it is in action? Have we been vengeful on people? And then, sorry, we have not loved God enough. Have I been vengeful? Have I been vindictive? Have I been, you know? Then it becomes a question of evaluating whether we have truly loved a God. And here is the truth of love. The love is something that forgives, that forgets, that takes the understanding of the need of the other people and accepts even insults and accepts anything that comes from people and then still say, I love God. I love God. Look at the lives of the disciples. Their lives were not bed of roses. They went through hell on this life. But then they knew and they had that heavenly vision. It was not an hell for them. It was an heavenly vision that transformed their you know, difficulties into sorrows and difficulties into joy. And that is exactly what happened. And particularly when you go through difficulties, when you go through insults, when you go through, you know, a situation where you cannot come to any conclusion. Remember one thing, praise God, leave it to God, God will take care. Now that's what has happened. Jehoshaphat was confronted by very powerful uh, enemies in his time and the prophet 
comes and tells him and courageous him saying you go ahead for the water and you know what what do you do you sing praises to god that routed the enemy completely paul and silas were in prison and they were you know handcuffed and in the most inconvenient you know kind of a prison situation what did they do they praised god god transformed their morning into you know a joy a beautiful moment that you know encourages all of us as christians to take up challenges in our life love god whatever happens do not let the love of god go away from your life please remember one thing where will you go if you feel leave god can you go to anybody else can you go to your husband can you go to your wife can you go to your children your relatives the best friends that you have today god has given us good health god has given us everything that we have my dear brothers and sisters remember we leave god everything would leave us everything would leave us loving god is the you know hub of our life that is the foundation of our being and that is something that we need to have on so loving god should never never take a secondary place it should be the first place and that's why moses said with all your heart a total complete love with all your soul and with all your strength love god love god that is more important today by dear brothers and sisters we are called upon to hold on to this wonderful god and before before he said love god he said something very beautiful therefore hear o israel that is in verse 3 of deuteronomy chapter 6 and be careful to observe it that it may be well with you very important we desire to have wellness within us we desire to have joy and happiness in us we desire to have peace in our life here is god's word for that hear o israel and be careful to observe it careful to observe what god's word that it may be well with you if you love god and it will go well with you and if you love god let us remember you cannot do anything evil you cannot do any harm to anybody you cannot destroy other people you cannot you know put others as life in a quandary and sit and laugh at it remember one thing remember one thing for you to go well with you love god when the love of god comes we would be incapable of doing anything evil in our life but rather we would be you know strengthened to do that which is good for others and it to go well with you and that you may multiply greatly as the lord god of your fathers has promised you so the multiplication the multiplication i am not you know extending the pro no and uh, today's uh, prosperity theology but that you would multiply in the sense that you would multiply in all the blessings that god has in store for you jesus has said to his disciples those who have left and you are following me and you will have hundredfold in this life and in the world to come also you will have blessing so god wants us to bless us but at the same time god wants us to be you know like him holy like him kind like him gentle like him understanding like him forgiving like him doing everything because that's what is expectation be holy as i am holy as the father has said me so send i you so my dear brothers and sisters let loyalty to god and the single most loyalty to god and a love for god never depart from your life may the good lord be with you may the good lord bless each and every single person of this congregation 
and I was able to communicate with many of you during those uh, pandemic situation over the telephone. And I want to thank God from the very bottom of my heart for those two wonderful persons who supplied the numbers to me every time. If there was anyone sick and needy, and there was the convener from the cats group, who used to immediately call me, Padre, this person needs prayer. This person needs your counseling. And Bhatmini would call me and say, Pastor, today is somebody's birthday, somebody's wedding anniversary. I don't know, I was able to communicate with you over the telephone. And there were other people who called me to say, these people are in needs. And I also called certain people regularly. Yes, what makes or what prompts all these things? The love of God. And I'm sure when I leave this place, this place will, take, will be taken by Reverend Naveen, as per the bishop's letter, and he will continue the ministry of the church, and I wish him all well, and all the committee members. God be with you. You meant a lot to us. Yes, a lot. I thank you. But let me tell you more than that. I thank each of these people who sat in these pews, who sincerely greeted us, who loved us so much. Thank you, dear members. Thank you. I give you my wholehearted you know, thanks to you because of your prayers, because of your love. I was able to go through my four and a half period here in this church. Thank you so much. God bless you. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and praise you for all that you mean to me and to my family. We want to thank you, dear Lord, for all the goodness that has been ours because of you. Dear Lord, I pray that your wonder-working hand would continue to lead and guide each of the church members. Bless these dear ones, O oh Lord, who earnestly come every Sunday and fill these pews, expecting earnestly for the word of God, expecting earnestly for the love and, Lord, fellowship of brothers and sisters. Bless everyone. Be unto them the tower of strength that you are. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In the light of what we've heard, let us all affirm our faith in the Apostles' Creed. Let us all say together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The announcements for the week. We welcome visitors and friends who continue to join us through this virtual online worship service. And we thank you all for continuing to be part of the Sunday worship services through the church YouTube channel. We hope that the church service continues to be a blessing to all of us. And please subscribe to the YouTube channel of the church, which contains the sermons and services of the past weeks. You may also visit the church website for details pertaining to pew slip and church announcements and also the pulse issues. The church op office is open from 9.30 to 4.30 during the week and from 9.30 to 12.30 on Saturday. Kindly uh, you may contact Mrs. Christie for any matters and for any assistance towards financial matters, you may contact Mrs. Anna 
And for any pastoral matters, you may kindly contact me. And we also uh, wish all the members who are celebrating their birthdays during this week and also their wedding anniversaries during this week. We pray for all, their, uh, mem all these members of our church and we pray that God would bless them in this new year ahead and also the families of all the couples and their lives who are celebrating their wedding anniversaries during this week. We regret to announce you the sad demise of Mr. Andrew Shagran, member of our church who slept in the Lord this week. Kindly remember their children, David and Christopher, and their families in your personal prayers. And we also regret to inform you the demise of Mr. Paris Vergis, son of Mr. Thomas Vergis and Mrs. Molly Vergis, who are members of our church. And uh, kindly remember Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Vergis in your personal prayers. Kindly also remember in your personal prayers all our senior friends and senior members who are homebound and kindly pray for the families who are affected because of the economic situation due to the COVID-19 virus and the lockdowns that has happened and we pray that you would kindly remember all these problems of the society in your personal prayers. Pray especially for all those people who have lost their jobs and who are affected because of the loss of jobs and the problems in the society. Members who have requested prayers, their names are mentioned in the pew slip. Kindly pray for these members, Mr. Joshua O'Kelly, Mrs. Leticia Luther and Mr. John Luther, Mrs. Joanne Kishanda, Mrs. Dorothy Fowler, Mrs. Nalini Christadas, Mrs. Geraldine Lincoln, Mrs. Sarojni Williams, Mrs. Violet Salins, Mrs. Sheila Das and Mr. Winston, Winston Gonzago. Last week's offering has been displayed in the church website Pew Slip. Kindly look into it. We thank all the members for continuing to support and patronize the ministries of the church, even though we are not meeting physically and even though uh, church service has not resumed. We thank all the members who continuously uphold the ministry of the church and we sincerely, fervently appeal to each and every one of you to continue to uphold the ministry of the church and you may kindly uh, offer your offerings, subscriptions, tithes and also contributions uh, either physically at the office or through online or through the different modes of transfer such as Google Pay. The details can be obtained from Mrs. Hannah in the church office. And once the remittance is done, kindly send a mail to the church ID, email ID, mentioning the purpose uh, with an attention to Mrs. Hannah about the purpose of remittance. Kindly uh, do so, so that it enables us to keep track of the purpose of your uh, offerings. Dear congregation members, I bring you greetings on behalf of the pastorate committee. This is to bring to your kind notice that the pastorate committee received a letter from the bishop dated 21st of August 2020, informing us that the presbyter in charge of St. John's Church, Reverend G. Wilson, will attain superannuation as on the 1st of September 2020. Further, the letter also stated that Reverend G. Wilson will be handing over charge as presbyter in charge of St. John's Church, Bangalore, on the 1st of September 2020 to Reverend Naveen K. John, assistant presbyter St. John's Church, who will function as presbyter in charge of St. John's Church until the stationing year 2020-21. The pastorate committee accepted the new presbyter in charge of St. John's Church, Reverend Naveen K. John, and congratulated him on his new assignment. The pastorate committee placed on record their profound appreciation, heartfelt gratitude, and sincere thanks to Reverend G. Wilson 
for his services as presbyter in charge of St. John's Church. The committee also wished him God's choicest blessings for a peaceful retired life after a long stint as a presbyter in the ministry of KCD. The pastor committee would like to thank the congregation for their continued support to the ongoing ministry of St. John's family. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all during this time of pandemic and always. Let us now spend some time in intercession by following the intercessory prayers. The congregational response for each prayer will be, hear our prayer. Let us pray. We pray for your church in this world that it may be obedient to your will and strong in your spirit to show your love and glory to all people, particularly during this pandemic. Lord, grant your grace and mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our country and for all countries that people may live in peace with justice and honor. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the poor and helpless, the sick, particularly those who are affected with the COVID virus, the bereaved, and all the victims of greed and persecution, that you may rescue them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We remember with gratitude the lives of those, especially the medical personnel, security, police, and all those who are rendering services to humanity, risking their lives. And, O oh Lord, it is our prayer that you would protect them every day and every time in their service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we commit our struggles and sufferings into your Son's wounded hands, our hopes and aspirations into his praying hands, our poor, hungry and exploited fellow human beings into his just and caring hands, our living and departed into his hands that hold the key to the future. Blessed be the Lord forever. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us now enter into the breaking of the bread as we solemnly come together to partake of the Lord's Supper. Let us pray. How very good and pleasant it is when people of God live together in unity. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Now I will offer in his ten sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. May we all say together the prayer of Christ's presence. Be present, be present, O Jesus, your good high priest, as you were in the midst of your disciples, and make yourself known to us in the breaking of the bread, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Truly it is right and good to glorify you at all times and in all places by offering you our thanksgiving, O Lord, Holy Father. You spoke and the light shattered darkness. Order arose from confusion. You breathed into the dust of the earth and we were formed in your image. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus, you came to us while we wandered. He met us as a refugee, a threatened child. He called us by name to leave what is comfortable, to be his disciples, friends and partners. With his outstretched arms on the cross and through his death, he bore our sins and through his resurrection, we are saved. And through your Holy Spirit, you brood over chaos that we create, mothering us and shaping a new creation. You enlightened everyone coming into the world. You inspired the prophets and the apostles 
to find the right word at the right time, you liberate, equip and commission your people for the continuance of your mission to make everything new. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim and say your glory. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Lord, we commemorate your death on the cross. We celebrate your resurrection and we await your coming. Eternal God, let your Holy Spirit move in power over us and over these earthly gifts of bread and wine, that they may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ, and that we may become one in him. May his coming in glory find us ever watchful in prayer, strong in truth and love, and faithful in the breaking of the bread. Then at last all peoples will be free, all divisions healed, and with your whole creation we will sing your praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honour are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we come before the Lord's table, let us say together the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs from under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies and souls may be made clean by his most precious body and blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. When we break the bread, do we not share in the body of Christ? We seek seek to, to share your life, life, gracious God. When we lift the cup, do we not share in the lifeblood of Christ? We seek, seek to, to share your life, life, gracious God.
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I invite you to the Lord's table in our own homes. You may receive the elements which is before you. After I receive the elements, you may follow later. The things of God for the people of God receive this in faith. Having now by faith received the sacrament of the body and blood of Christ, as we continue to affirm the oneness of faith in our own homes, let us continue to give thanks to God by saying together the prayer of thanksgiving. Let us all say together, Merciful God of all creation, Holy Father of all people, who through our Lord Jesus Christ united all things in his fullness, we join your whole creation in exultant praise of your bountiful goodness. You have now touched us with new life and filled us with new hope that your reign will come, the hungry will be fed, that the oppressed will be set free from evil, that your reconciling work will be done, that love and faithfulness will meet together that justice and peace will kiss each other and the whole creation will be filled with your glory. Amen. Let us all continue to say together, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, as, we, as I come to the close of my ministry in St. John's, uh, it, it, I would like to thank God for this privilege and opportunity. And I would be failing in my duty if I do not thank two uh, or some very important people. And one is Ramana and Benjamin, who were there at every call. And Benjamin and Ramana would be there to help me out in any time. So I would like to thank God for those two lovely young men who have been a source of strength to me in my ministry. And I also would like to thank God for the gardeners and all the you know, staff who have uh, served here in this compound. Thank you very much. And I would like to say this closing prayer, uh, for it is a desire of mine that I should commit the congregation and each of you into God's hand. So let us bow our heads in prayer. Our most gracious, loving Heavenly Father, As I stand at this point of my life in this altar, I want to thank you and praise you, dear Lord, for the great people of God and servants of God who were there in 1979 and the 80s. Oh, dear Lord, saw me fit to send me to this church to minister. And I want to thank you, dear Lord, with fear and trembling I began my ministry here. And now with fear and trembling I commit myself and this congregation into your care. Dear Lord, we want to thank you and praise you that we worship a holy God in whose presence we tremble and fear. But at the same time, 
the gentleness of our God. He encourages to come to you and to say, Abba Father, we want to thank you, dear Father in heaven. Today, dear Lord, I want to thank you for this great church, for its wonderful heritage, for its beauty, and for its people. It's my prayer, dear Lord, that I commit each and every person of this congregation into your care and into your Dear Lord, blessed hands. Dear Father, each family has its own, dear Lord, concerns. Each family has its own joys. Each family has its own sorrows. Each family has its questions. Each family has its desires. And, oh dear Lord, a future that they are looking up to. Oh Father in heaven, it is my prayer that you would be with each of these family members and bless them. Particularly, I pray for the seniors. Be with the senior citizens, O oh dear Lord. In their life, O oh Father in heaven, all that they have done, may bring good memory to give them that boldness and courage and happiness and joy that they require in their retired life. We pray for parents, young parents who are bringing up their children. Bless them with knowledge, understanding, O oh dear Lord, to take up the challenges of life with ease and say, The Lord is with me. The Lord is my fortress and my strength. Oh, Father, I pray that you would bless the young parents. I pray, dear Lord, for mothers in a very special way, who in the course of our life, oh, Father, do most of the things to build the families. I pray, dear Lord, that you would bless and lead them. I pray for the fathers. Be unto them the tower of strength that you are, dear Lord, and bless them. We pray for the children, O oh Father. Father, we have grown up in times when there were less challenges, when there were less choices. But today's children are faced with many choices. We pray, dear Lord, that you would govern their life with wisdom and understanding, that you would give them, O oh dear Lord, the toughness that they require in order to stand as your children in this community that ever changing every time. We also bring to thy throne of grace, O oh dear Lord, the projects of the church, Ashanivas, the resident of Ashanivas, the convener and the warden. Bless them, O oh Father in heaven. Bless each resident. Bless the residents of Stephen Swan. Bless the convener, the warden, and the residents, O oh dear Lord. Give them strength. Give them, O oh dear Lord, your presence, that none of them would feel lonely when they are living in our campus, that everybody would feel the presence of God and the presence of the church that are there with them. We also pray, dear Father in heaven, for all the wings of the church, the men's fellowship, the women's fellowship, the Youth Fellowship, the Teens Fellowship, the Sunday School, the Neighborhood Fellowship. O oh dear Father in heaven, we pray for all these fellowship groups. Bless each of their ministry, dear Lord. O oh Father, during these four and a half years of time, that none of these wings of the church, the projects of the church, have suffered in any way that they were O oh dear Lord, independently were able to do their ministry and bring glory and honor to you. O oh Father, we pray that each of the ministering of the church would proclaim the testimony as it was to the days to come as well, O oh dear Lord. Continue to be with them, Father in heaven, and bless each of the leaders who give leadership to the church and continue to surround them with your presence. Particularly, Lord, we pray for the committees that are there, Bless each committee to be a witness bearing committee to you. Bless everyone when they take a decision that they will decide basing on the glory of God as Atmos and that would stand up in their thinking. Bless them too, dear Lord. And now, dear Father, we pray for the entire campus. We pray for the school. We pray for every administration that goes on here. Oh dear Lord, we pray that you would bless and lead and guide these ministries of the church. 
continue to be with each one of us even as we take different routes now may the love of god bind us with the cords of love that comes from your shed blood on the calvary's cross that we will be always united as one family in jesus name we pray amen and to god's gracious mercy and protection i commit you the blessings of god almighty the father the son and the holy spirit rest and abide with you now and always amen as we come before god let us receive god's blessing unto god's gracious mercy and protection and guidance we commit you may the blessing of god almighty the father the son and the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and always amen as we conclude our virtual service let us all join in and sing together the closing hymn Say